Welcome to Mixing for Beginners. I'm Matt. Uh, we are continuing through a suite of videos talking about mixing your lead vocals. And we've uh, so far we've gone through editing the track and then pitch correcting, then EQing, then adding compression. Then we started our time-based base effect, based effects. Uh, reverb was the last video. And then this one, we're gonna talk about delay. So uh, the effects rack, you can see here, this is the track that we're working on. We've worked on it the entire way through this uh, Vox First Chant Flat. Um, the effects rack down below is starting to really fill up. Uh, and as you can see, we've talked about this in several videos that a bunch of these are now in groups. So we grouped the EQs together and created uh, sub racks out of them. So we could choose, perhaps we wanted to pan, well, in this case, we panned the, the um, uh, parts of the signal a little bit left and right to give more uh, width to the vocal track. And then we created a, a, tr a, a group out of the three compressors, actually uh, it's a uh, two compressors and the preamp here. And we've created another rack uh, for the uh, for the the spatial effects that are going on the time based effects, and um, one of the reasons why we group like this is so you can have the sub racks and you can split the sound and and um, and EQ them differently or apply reverb to them differently. But also because when you group them, then you can save them by hitting the little save icon here, and they end up over here in your your user library. I've saved them to my plugin chains, and now if I ever want. To, if, if I want a place to start from, I've recorded a lead vocal track, I can grab this, um, this EQ group and drag it on in here. I'll just show you what it looks like when I drag it right into the effects rack. And it replicates, I mean, it's basically this one. But I might not EQ every single vocal track the same way, but at least this gives me a starting place. And I've done the same thing with, uh, with how I want to compress vocals. I've done the same thing with... Um, with spatial effects here as well. Um, do I actually have here? Yeah, lead vox spatial effects here. In the last video, like I mentioned, we talked about reverb and I created a group here as well so that I could have a, a dry signal and then two other signals with reverb on it. Uh, there's the Valhalla on the, what I call uh, the, the uh, verb left and then the Valhalla on verb right. And that way I'm splitting the reverb up to either side and keeping the dry signal right center in the mix. And again, this is so that the lyrics and the voice are really audible and, and um, audible and present in the center of the mix, but you have some verb not in the way a little bit to the, or you know, pretty far to the left and the right. And here is what it sounds like on its own. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. The dew will come to the see mix. the truth and then filter it. And now your mind's eye is bruised like a pute. So there's a good space on there. There's a, there's a good amount of, of reverb on there, but you can still hear the vocal nice and clean. Uh, I want to continue using this this rack that we created to add other time-based effects. So let's add the delay um, here to to this uh, to this group. And how we do that is just grab um, the the dry signal, and I'm going to um, duplicate it by hitting Command D. Now we got a second one. I'm drag it all the way down to the bottom here. And did it go? Yep. And then rename it to uh, delay. And um, let's start first with a delay that comes with Ableton. I've said this a lot. Ableton's got some really great plugins. And if you're only using those, if you don't want to pay, uh, spend money on third-party plugins, you'll do pretty well. There's a lot of great third-party plugins out there, some of which I, I use a lot. But um, but Ableton does a good job, and let's start with that. So, so I am right here under audio effects and then delay and loop. Just grab the delay, and I want to drag it right onto the delay rack that we created right down here on the bottom. And you'll see if I scroll through these, this the dry, dry signal has everything below it, but nothing um, after the dry signal. Uh, verb left, I've got um, the Valhalla Vintage Verb, same thing with right. And now on delay, we've got, uh, we, we've got delay applied. So the reason why we want to, uh, I want to do this is because then I can choose how much of um, the dry signal that I want and how much delay I want. So actually, I'm going to bring those volume down here. It's probably going to be somewhere around here. 
But uh, let me just, oh, why do we use delay? <laughs> Let's start there. So uh, delay uh, we use as an echo a lot of times in tandem with the reverb. We talked about this on the last video where there's this uh, parameter called pre-delay, which is the time that it takes from um, you know the source to generate audio to hit the wall and come back to you. Um, that's pre-delay, and the longer the the time that that takes, the further further back that that echo happens. And um, so normally we're used to hearing things with a little bit of pre-delay on it. it. Doesn't sound quite right if pre-delay is set to zero or close to zero, because then you're just sort of immersed in this reverb, but it doesn't really define the space. However, if we want to control that pre-delay parameter more granularly, then we can do that with the delay because we can create that slap back moment uh, of the pre-delay and um, and just, yeah, and just be very specific about those parameters, more specific than most reverbs will give us. The next reason is because delay is very flexible. You can use it for a, a lot of different things. Uh, you can use it to fill up the, the, the voice a bit, um, give it more emphasis or width in the mix. You can use it to uh, make vocals more interesting. Think about um, if you know Us and Them by Pink Floyd. You have this law, it's an iconic delay. It's us, 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 us. And it's just, it's such a slow and kind of plodding song. It's such a beautiful song, one of my favorites. But that, it, it keeps things interesting when there's no, the vocal line is very sparse without that delay, but it just sort of fills in that void and gives us this little wave to ride um, between, each, each vo uh, between each lyric. Um, it also gives, it can give the ear a sense of time period. Like there are, time-based effects sound different depending on uh, when they were created or, uh, the, or the type of, or when like the hardware versions of them were created. So the 80s sounds different than the 70s or the 90s. If you wanna place some, uh, someone somewhere in time, you can use delay to do that. Um, also like besides filling up voids and like places where not a lot is going on, you can use delay to create this horizontal space in the mix. Uh, there's this thing, I'll show you ping pong, Delay. We'll send a delay to either side, uh, either side of the mix, and you can, you know, all the way pan left, all the way pan right, and it just gives you this this sense of width in in the mix. It also can be used to make transitions in the song more exciting. Like a lot of times when I write, I think about the point at which the verse becomes the chorus, or the chorus become uh, goes back to the verse. It's like I want to make sure that that transition point is interesting. And one of the, sometimes what I'll do is like the vocal will carry over from um, from one section to another. But another thing that I'll do is, and maybe I'll put like a harmony there or something, or, or more reverb there. But another thing that I'll do is I'll add delay. And I'll actually like apply more delay at that point, so you get that carryover from one to the next. And you can make things like really interesting, particularly if there's like a key change or something. You might get a really awesome suspension that echoes over the next section. Um, and then also another thing that a delay is good for is creating ambiance in a mix. Instead of something like, like say you wanted to create uh, something in the background like chords, like pads or keyboards in the background to fill out the harmonic quality and character of your song, you can do that and that's fine. But another thing you can do is if you wanna maybe maintain a little bit more space so it's not just these held, um, these held chords, is instead do like a keyboard stab with a long, long, long delay on it. And so that stab just, you know, just floats, floats on defining that harmonic space without it just being this one like locked, um, this one locked like chord forever. So anyway, there's tons of reasons why I would use delay and not just on, on vocals, on, uh, like I said, on keyboards, people use it on snare all the time. Um, it could just be used pretty much everywhere. So let's talk about the Ableton delay, which we already applied down here. And, and I'll just take you through the interface a little bit. So the first thing is it gives you two channels, left and right, and they're independent channels. And up here, the first button we get to is sync. And what that does is it syncs the delay to the tempo of your song. And then the numbers represent a 16th note. So say you want the delay to happen after the first 16th note, um, you would hit the number one. Or after a quarter, uh, an eighth note, which is two 16th notes, you'd hit two. The other thing you can do is you can unlink the stereo and then you can have the left 
uh, delay, you have the left delay happen at a different time than the right delay. Maybe you want a quick succession, succession of, uh, of, of, of delay, or maybe you want something that's like happens right off the bat and then happens a moment later, uh, a couple of beats later. So you have that option. Um, and so let's just hear what this sounds like with, uh, with an eighth, eighth note echo here. Um, and I'll turn this up in the mixture so we can hear it. You wear the flag, don't dress like a cat. That's a pretty big, and let me actually turn off this verb too so we just hear the delay. You wear the flag, don't dress like a cat. Let's just hear it with the music. You wear the flag, don't dress like a cat. Okay, now, of course, that's too loud, but I just wanted to play it at that volume so we could all hear it. Let's just hear what it sounds like when it's more buried in the mix. Let's go negative 10 D. You wear the flag, don't dress like a cat. Still, I would think it'd be lower in the mix. Uh, it's still too prominent, but I don't think that's the main problem with uh, how this sounds right now. I would prefer, I, th I think it sounds a little bit too long from my point of attack, from the point of the attack of the vocals before the reflection happens. So let's just hear it with a uh, one sixteenth what it sounds like. You wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat. The will Bring it down the mix. Yeah, that sounds better. So you get a nice slap back there, but it's not necessarily, it doesn't sound late at that point. But if we take sync off, say we didn't really like, say we, say I didn't really like uh, the 16th note, that was too short, uh, or the two 16th notes or the eighth note, that was too long. Well, say like you want, I want a little bit longer than the 16th, but not quite the, the eighth. Well, what you could do you wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat direct. is switch it from sync to time based, and then it's time in milliseconds. You wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat direct. The duo will call to see the truth and then filter it. And now your mind and then somewhere in between, like you evangelize in line with the safest. Agent. Yeah, so now it's a little bit longer than the 16th note, which makes it sound a little bit lazier, a little bit more relaxed. So you can really use the time base to, to dial, it in, dial it in if you don't want it to be right dead on the beat. Um, so the next thing is below here is the feedback button or the feedback knob. And what the feedback knob does is how much the output channel, so what happens at the end of the delay, feeds back into the delay and, and hits it again. And what that means is that it's how many reverberations we're gonna get. So let's just go back to hearing this uh, just with the delay with a, and, and just change the, the feedback a bit. You wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat direct. The dude will come to see the truth and then See how long, and then to like zero. You wear the flag. So just once, right? Um, so the length of the feedback really helps determine how how muddy or clear the sound is. Usually, I prefer unless I'm using it for some sort of effect. I usually prefer a le less feedback. You wear the flag. And then I'm also um, just like uh, a bunch of the other plugins that we have. We have a dry wet knob, so I'd actually bring this down a little bit here. You wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat? But we can also really control it uh, here. This is kind of a dry, wet knob too. So let's bring this down in the mix. You wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat? Direct. So it's pretty prominent like this, but there's no reverb on it. So let's just hear all of it together. You wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat? Direct. And now the in the mix. will call to see the truth and then filter it. Yeah, it just gives almost a bit of like a chorusy sound. This is just really fast. Um, Slap back and then a nice tail from the reverb. You wear the flag, don't you dress like a cat direct. The duo will call to see the truth and then fill. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. All right, the next thing to talk about is this filter here. And the filter, actually, uh, the audio hits the filter first before the rest of the delay effect takes over. And what the filter does is it, it tells us it, or it defines the width of frequencies getting picked up and then which specific band of frequencies that uh, we want to hit the delay. And to adjust this, if we want less high and low end, we can just drag it down. And then to choose the exact band, we just, uh, we just move left or right. Uh, I'm just gonna sort of keep it like this and get rid of some of the high and low end. Um, next thing is the modulation, which I don't really want to go through, but but basically it it adds a low frequency frequency oscillator, which is often used to modulate some sort of parameter like pitch or something, or create some tremolo. 
Uh, you can play around with this and it gives you a different character of the of what the delay sounds like. And then on the right hand side is the is the mode. And the mode has to do with what the effect would look like, what the delay would look like if you started and stopped, or if you made a if you made a change in parameter sort of midstream. So if it were playing along and we uh, and we and we automated the filter to change the feedback or change uh, change the sync time, et cetera. It's what will what will happen during that transition point? Will it repitch it? Will it just fade it out, make like a sort of a crossfade to it, or will it jump? And no need to really worry about that. We're just gonna stay with what we have right here. And then the last thing is this ping pong, ping pong, which it sends the delay one side and then the other, one side then the other. So let me just, uh, this is what it sounds like. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. Here, go the left to right. Will call it that can be a nice effect too if you're trying to, if you're trying to make a, like a wider audio experience for your listener. Um, the other way to do that is two delays and put one on the left and put one on the right. And then finally, this dry wet knob is just how much you're applying to the dry signal coming you through. You wear the flag on your- And you can turn this up to 100 and then use here, you know, uh, use dry wet here, basically. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. The dew will call to see the truth and then filter it. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, if you're consistent, just 100% dry wet if you're gonna do it in a rack and then use the volume change here. Um, okay, so that is pretty much the delay that comes with Ableton. It's, I think it sounds pretty good and super easy to use. The last thing that I wanna do is uh, take a look at a plugin that I use quite a lot. Is this the, let's, let's see where it is. I think it's here. Yeah, so there's a Waves plugin called HDelay. And let's just drag that on to the rack, wait for it to come up. Okay, um, here's another one. I mean, this is a this is something that, that I paid for, so it does, uh, it does cost a bit if you wanna use it, but I, I use this one all the time. I really like the H delay. I like the way that it sounds. Super easy to use. Uh, basically, it's very similar parameters, actually less of them though. Um, you have here is this, on this dial is the, is the delay type, so you can choose, this is all synced in time with the tempo of, um, of, of your song. But basically, like, do you want it to be a 16th note? All of them you can choose, like regular dotted uh, or or triplet feel. So D for dotted, T for triplet. Um, so you can really dial stuff in. And uh, you can choose up here whether you want a ping pong effect or not. Um, it tells you the BPM here as well, which is, it matches the song. And then you have modulation down here if you want to try that out. It's probably easier to mess with it here. Let me see. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. The dew will call to see the truth and then filter it. And now your mind's eye is bruised like a pugilist. You Here it modulate, weird. In line with the safer now that's a lot of effect, uh, which we wouldn't use, but just so you know what it sounds like. And then here is your feedback, so how long um, the reverberations are gonna, the echo's gonna happen for. You wear the flag on your dress let's like just a solo this. Uh, I would probably bring this down. Let's try, let's see if this eighth note instead of 16th note worked better with the delay from Ableton. Shouldn't be much difference here, different here, but uh, let's just check it out and we'll just bring up the volume so we can hear better. You wear the flag on your dress like a cat to rack. The dew will call to see the truth and then... Yeah, I think that's still too long. I think 16th was the way to go. Oh, we could try a, um, a, trip, a 16th triplet. Let's try that. You wear the flag on your... Let's try the eighth triplet, I think. I went down. Too far one. Oh. See if that sounds any better. It might make it a little lazier than the eighth. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. The dew will call to see the truth and then filter it. I mean, that's not so bad. Bring the feedback down. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. The dew will call to see the truth and then filter it. And now your mind's eye is bruised like a. That's actually pretty good. It's a little lazier than the 16th. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. Let's hear the mix. The dew will call to see the truth and then filter it. And now your mind's eye is bruised like a pugilist. You will. I mean, that's not bad. Oh, the one thing I do want to mention, though, is this analog knob sucks. Uh, just remove that to off. It, it creates some noise and some weird things. Don't use that. Uh, the high pass and low pass are here, too. So this is where you can choose, oh, I don't want to hear anything below a certain frequency, or I don't want to hear, or uh, above, yeah, below a certain frequency. I don't want to hear, you know, a certain amount above a certain frequency. You can do that right there. You wear the flag on your dress like a cat. 
it. And now your mind's eye is bruised like a pugilist. You evangelize in line with the saberists. I think that sounds pretty good. Actually, you have a dry wet knob right here and uh, output if you needed to boost it here, but we don't. I would just keep host. Um, and then you could choose ping pong too, which is nice. That actually makes it a little bit louder, so we're gonna want to bring you it down. Like like truth and then filter it, and now your mind's eye is bruised like a pugilist. You event just gives us a little bit more width on the left and right, uh, which is nice because then it's not getting in the way of the dry signal in the center of the um, of the mix here. You wear the flag on your dress like a cataract. Still too loud. Let's just hear the the verbed and delay section. Just see what that. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I like it. So anyway, uh, H delay. It's uh, you can get it from Waves. I use this one, I think, predominantly, but the the Ableton delay works great as well. And um, I think that's it. So see you in the next one. Bye. Agent.